Building goals versus ministry goals, next on the Metal Pulpit. Thanks for joining me for another Metal Pulp and I'm sitting in my van. It's uh, cold, uh, but it's warm in here, waiting for my daughter to get out of school. It's gonna get down to zero tonight. It's uh, the heart of winter here in Wisconsin. But as I'm sitting here, I, I wanna come at this podcast uh, fresh and new from the viewpoint of a pastor in a, a building, a church building, and let you in on a few things. And the thing that came to mind today that I wanna talk about is building goals versus ministry goals. You see, there's a high uh, amount of pastors that feel the pressure, the need to build, to add on, capital campaigns. And though it's occasionally necessary, follow me on this one, it's not always necessary. You see, the thing about a building goal, a capital campaign, is there's excitement. There's uh, uh, The church will bring in uh, an outside source, run a capital campaign, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars are raised, and for what? to build a gym, to build a new sanctuary, to build a whole new church. And the tagline you usually see with this is that, so we can do ministry, <laughs> all right? Now here's the problem with that. I'm just, I'm not even gonna address that whole last statement I just said, so we can do ministry. You, I'll let you decipher that one. Here's the problem though, on a serious note, a lot of pastors burn out during building goals, either in the middle or about within two years afterwards. They just lose their health, they have no more interest. And why is that? Because building goals, when it's completed, it's exciting. I'm sitting outside my, my kid's school right now, Chain of Lakes Elementary School. And it's exciting when new walls go up. It's exciting when the new offices go in, when the new sound equipment goes in. This is exciting stuff. I, I, I am a tech guy, I love tech. And um, I can't, I can just imagine a whole new building. But here's a deal, it comes to an end. It does, it comes to an end and the honeymoon phase of the new building is over and now you are stuck with a huge uh, loan and most of the sermons are surrounding finances, giving, why you ought to give more, on and on it goes. And then when that is over and if the pastor's still sticking around, what do you do? It's the status quo once again, until, wait for it, the next capital campaign. Everybody gets excited. It's a vicious cycle. And when you make buildings the goal of any church, you're gonna hit a wall, pastors are gonna leave, people are gonna get disgruntled, the wall colors aren't right, the pew colors aren't right, you should have done chairs instead of pews, and so people leave, but new people come. Now here's the deal, when you make ministry the goal, you win. I have broken two stereotypes in ministry. The first one was the average youth pastor stays, I believe it's up to seven months now. My first youth pastor that I took, I stayed for eight years. From there, I became a senior pastor of a church and I have been here for 15 years. And one time during that, the youth pastor years, the church that I was a part of decided to buy a big building. So I've been on that side of it. And you know what? It sucked. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you. It was awful. We couldn't afford it, and, and I didn't want anything to do with it. And on and on it goes, and ultimately the pastor had to resign. There was a bunch of stuff, and it just, it fell apart. Um, I'm glad to say it's doing some better today, but I've been on that side of the fence. But when I make ministry the goal, guess what? For me personally, I wanna stay one place eight years. I wanna stay a pastor at the same church for 15 years. Why? Because I don't really care about the building. I do, I gotta keep it up, I want it looking nice. But my next thing is not how we can add on more sanctuary. It's more about adding another service if needed. But what outreaches can we do? What can we do to get out in the community to do more? What, what programs for kids can we do? All of these things. When you make ministry the goal, you win. There is never a point where you're like, I am done doing ministry and now I will sit back. No, you always have the, the mind of, what can I do to reach our community next? During Christmas time, 
there was a lady on Facebook that posted, I'm in desperate need, I'm, I'm stranded, um, I'm a single mother, car broke down, can anybody help me? No responses. I chimed in and I said, I will get, I will, uh, with our church, we'll get a tow company over to your, over to you where you are. And there she was about 35 miles away and we had her car towed back. That's ministry. Always thinking of something better to do, something more you can do, enhancing the ministries that you have. Building, big, building a bigger building and opening the doors and expecting everybody to come in might work for a year, might work for a few months, but it's not sustaining. Keep ministry the main goal and you'll always be jazzed and never see an end in sight. So there you go. Shoot me your thoughts, Pastor Bob Adams at gmail.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day.